What's good, y'all? your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, the wrestling world has been lit ablaze once again by CM Punk. CM Punk had a lengthy interview with Ariel Hawani on uh, his show, The MMA Hour. He was, you know, talking about some things that went down in AEW that he was able to talk about. Uh, obviously, there's still an NDA in place on certain things he can and can't say, but ariel hawani was asking some good questions and cm punk was giving some some great answers so uh we're gonna check out one particular clip that's uh circulating on social media right now i've watched most of it and it was a a, a very very great watch you know great listen if you want to just check out cm punk's perspective on things um but we're gonna check out a clip basically talking about what happened with jack perry and cm punk and the i guess you could say the straw that broke the camel's back when cm punk was like you know what i'm done he was over it and that was the last time we had seen him on an aew television so he kind of gave some context on his side of things and i'm also going to talk about some of the stuff that he did mention on the interview i'm not going to show footage of it just this particular clip so we're going to check this out it's on twitter right now on the wrestle ops twitter page and let's get right into this one man because for those who haven't seen it this is uh he gets into it he he definitely breaks down a lot of things that went down in AEW that some of us or most of us probably didn't even know so let's get right into this one man pay me my money I, like um, I'm, i've already been off tv i i hurt this arm just just get me out of here you know no i can't let you go why just let me go who cares i'm i'm it's it's best i mean they, these guys don't want me here this this isn't this isn't a real business. This isn't a business predicated on making money, drawing money, selling tickets, Damn. you know, doing business. It's 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 not what it was sold to me as. So let me go. Oh. And he was trying to leave. So this is after the whole situation with the, the brawl out, you know, after that whole situation, he was like, look, I'm trying to leave. He was trying to cut cut ties. He's, he knew people didn't want him there. This is not what he envisioned his return to wrestling would be ultimately he's like, all right, let's just cut ties. And Tony Khan's like, nah, 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 nah. I want to keep you. Oh, I can't let you go. I'm going to do this new show. You're going to, you know, you're going to have blah, blah, blah. And then the second day we have this show, I'm sitting in catering, minding my own business. And Tony Chavani comes and gets me. And he's like, Hey, can I, I really need your help? And I was like, what? He's like, Jack is, you know, cussing me out and he's cussed out. Mike Mansuri and he cussed out Daryl from production and he's cussing out the doctor right now. Why? What? And, and I was immediately like, dude isn't supposed to be here. You know, I was told the sh people are getting separated. So there's not problems and you don't want me involved in this. We all know what the rumors were. They created a collision for CM Punk. They were going to separate, you know, the rosters for the most part. And CM Punk was going to be the focal point of this entire new show so he's over there just like you know hey i'm not trying to cause no problems i'm just trying to make this show the best show possible and um obviously it didn't end up that way because just like everything else i've explained before like y'all need to handle this because if you don't i'm gonna handle it and you're not gonna like the way i handle it prophetic words so he's begging me now please he drags me out of catering i go up um uh hook and you see you see how he said y'all need to handle it somebody in management uh upper management whatever y'all need to handle it because if i handle it you're not gonna like how this goes and this is a recurring theme throughout this entire interview of him addressing tony and saying somebody needs to handle this because if i handle it you're probably not gonna like how it get done and jack are doing uh an angle i don't know anything about jack going on vacation all i know is there's a litany of people that um don't want they, they work one day a week and they don't want to so they want to show up and wrestle and then film vignettes and then sit at home for four weeks great not my company do what you want mm. but not on my show that was my attitude so i, I said tony you really want me doing this yeah and I walked up to Jack and he was sitting in a car. What he wanted to do, it was a rental car. What he wanted to do was smash the window of the rental car with a pipe. And I was just like, it's a rental car. And I very politely, because I like Jack, 
I was just like, Doc's told you no, Daryl's told you no, Mike's told you no, Shivani's told you no, and now I have to tell you no. And apparently you've cussed them all out. So I'm telling you no. We don't do that here. If you want to do this, go to Wednesday and do it. I mean, he handled it. Multiple people have told him, hey, don't do that. Don't, there's no need to do that. Multiple people have said it. The guy that's pretty much essentially running the show, it's like, hey, just everyone said it. Let's just not do this. Let's do something else. Right. And he had no problem. He said, okay. He said, well, I just thought it was a really cool idea. And I said, it might be, but this is a rental car. Boys ruin it for the boys. You're going to smash the window of a rental car and you're going to return it with no fucking window. And now whatever national budget hurts, whatever is going to be like, don't, don't rent cars to pro wrestlers anymore. This is a thing that's happened. Right. This is, you know, so I wasn't trying to throw my weight around. I wasn't like, this is my show and you got to get out of here. I was just like this fucking dumb man. And he wanted to do it because so he didn't have to fly back to Canada. And I, you know, <laughs> sorry, man, we're privileged to be in this business. We're privileged to do this for a living. Like, I get it. I didn't want to go to Canada either. The, the, all the flights were delayed, canceled. Everybody's travel sucked. But to come to this new show when everyone's supposed to be separated, to get rid of all the drama, and then, you know, swearing at the doctor because the doctor's like, it's real glass. You're going to, you know, like, shit's going to go in your eye. Like, and I get it. I used to be that kid that was, like, young and I want to do this, you know, but there's a safe way to do it. And mm -hmm. I politely explained that to him. I didn't raise my voice. I didn't cuss at him. I was just like, I very much just said, we don't do that here. This is Saturday. It's a different show. If you want to do stuff like this, do it on Wednesday. That was it. I didn't think there was going to be a problem. He obviously took something very business-minded, very personally. And that's fine, because I've done that before, too. Yeah, but it it's happens. very much who he's friends with. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, shit never got squashed. Nobody and that's the problem. This, is, this, this, this ultimately falls back on Tony because they, he never facilitated the squashing of all of this tension. So he's friends with someone. He asked CM Punk to do something. CM Punk's like, no. Even though everybody else said no, he goes back to his friends, and I'm pretty sure they're like, oh, man, I wouldn't take that shit from CM Punk. Fuck him. Now you cause issues because Tony should have stepped in. Like, I, I said that. I gave him the order to, I agree with what CM Punk said. Step in and nullify all of this. He could talk, say whatever he wants to say with his friends. That's fine, but going off the script and doing what you want to anyway, no, that's not what's up. But he's in charge, and it turned into what it turned into. So he says that, clearly a shot at you, as you said. Match is over, he goes to the back, what happens? Uh, I, went, I went to Tony, and I was just like... Which Tony, by the way? Khan. Khan. Okay. And I was like, please handle that. Hmm. Like, please. And he was like, what do you want me to do? And I was like, I'm not telling you what to do. Just be the boss, please. Like, I'm tired of this shit. So this is at the point of the show where he's like real glass, cry me a, ri a river or whatever. So CM Punk goes to Tony, say, hey, handle this. And Tony's like, what you want me to do? I don't know. Talk to the guy like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> Jesus, bro. You know, like I told you it was a mistake. I told you separate shows wasn't going to work. And now we're all here and, you know. Like, please handle it. Because if you don't, you're not going to like the way I handle it. Yep. Did he handle it? No. No. He didn't. No. So you did. did. Yes. What happened? <sighs> Jack came back from his match. I was the next match. I'm sitting there. I got, I got people with me. I'm not going to say who they are. You know, because I got a lot of friends who work there and I, I, I wish them all well and I don't, don't want them to be punished because they're friends with me, you know, and I walk up to them and I'm just like, Jack, why do you insist on doing this dumb Internet shit like on, on TV, you know, and he's just like, well, if you got a problem about it, do something about it. And I was just like, man, come on, man, <laughs> you know, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, and it just, you know, it's like Chael says, sometimes you just. Can't let you get close, you know. I thought I was doing a responsible thing, you know. I didn't punch anybody. <laughs> I just choked somebody a little bit. Some <laughs> Bro, that's a fucking funny ass line. Niggas, 
I ain't punch him. I just choked him out. Just choked him a little bit. I he ain't even say he ain't choked him out. He just I just choked him a little bit. Like just yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> Mojo was there, told me to stop, and, and then I quit. I turned it. Oh, and then uh apparently um on this next part, he basically ends up saying that he pre pretty much told Tony Khan uh, that he quit. This is before his match with Samoa Joe. He told Tony Khan he quits. Just, uh, he called him a clown, and he's he's over it. So before the match even happened, before him and Samoa Joe had a match, they were supposed to have a match next, he quit. He legit quit. He quit. But he still did the job because Ariel was like, why did you still go out there? And he said, I did the job for Joe and the fans that were there. And he was still, he still went out there and did the job. Because he could have said, fuck it, and just dipped. Said, fuck you, fuck this company, I'm out. But he was cool, he's cool with Samoa Joe. And he's like, damn, this is probably going to be the last time I ever get to wrestle Samoa Joe. Fuck it, I'm going to do the job. And that was it. And then apparently at that point, they told Jack Perry to leave. And then uh, CM Punk was asking, do I have to leave? And they were saying no. But eventually, as he's watching the show later on, one of the security people was like, yo, do you have anything else to do? And it was basically like he kind of wanted people wanted him to leave. So CM Punk was like, would it make your job easier if I left? And he was like, most likely. So. But no one's saying you have to leave, but it would probably be better if you just left. So that's literally what it was. And then, you know, we have the infamous Tony was fearing for his life and he had to let go of CM Punk, which CM Punk was like, I don't know how Tony was feeling, feel, feeling, but I never did anything to him that would elicit for him to have that response, which I kind of figured that was kind of cap when Tony said that. I was like, what the fuck happened? Did he choke you too? Like, what is going on? So it's just one of those things where it's like all of this, this whole situation could have been avoided if if Tony would have just been the boss and stepped up. He also talked about what happened with the whole um, Adam, uh, Adam Page situation. He said him and Adam Page actually discussed what they were going to talk about on like they went they had a back and forth. On what they were going to say on the promo for the most part. So when he gets out there. And they're cutting the promo on each other. Adam Page is not saying nothing. Of what CM Punk and him discussed. So CM Punk was like bro. I was trying to actually listen to what he was saying. Because the crowd was so loud. And then once I'm listening in. I'm like yo he's. He's fucking trying to bury me. What the fuck. And it was just one of those things. Where he was like. He felt some type of way. He's like. Yo, we didn't even talk about this. What are you doing? So he goes back. They have their conversation. And he's trying to figure out why would you do that? Like, what 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 was the point? And then it came out that pretty much the rumors were going around that CM Punk had quote unquote got Colt Cabana fired, which that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. CM Punk said I had nothing to do with that. So that rumor was going around. Hence, that's why we have the the infamous situation of him just going off on that media scrum because there was people there that he knew was spreading that rumor that wasn't true. So it does it just all exploded. And once again, Tony didn't do nothing. He didn't handle it. He he told Tim Punk told Tony Khan, "What's up with this? Like you need to handle this, or I will." And he never did. Tony Khan sat there and let this boy, uh, let CM Punk just say fuck it and release all his frustrations. Now, he wasn't able to talk about the actual brawl afterwards because of the NDA. The NDA doesn't unlock, block him from saying what, you know, some of this other stuff happened, but the NDA definitely blocks him from talking about what happened because he can't even talk about the injury he ended up potentially suffering in that match. He said he had to. Uh, not the match in that brawl because he said he had to pay for his own uh, surgery, medical fees, all this other stuff. Like he wasn't compensating on none of that on what went down. So we we don't know, and I'm doubt Tony's gonna say anything about this. Honestly, it's just 
it's kind of more or less what we've heard, like the rumors and stuff, but it makes sense. It, it, it makes sense. The moral of what I had got gathered from this entire interview is like over almost over two hours is the fact that Tony Khan didn't handle things when they were addressed. When CM Punk say, hey, I need you to handle this, he would just, he wouldn't do it. The fact that he's out there, you see Jack Perry doing something that everyone else said no, obviously antagonizing CM Punk, and CM Punk goes to you and say, hey, can you do something about this? And he's like, what do you want me to do? What? Like, what are you talking about? And he, he basically essentially let it be known. He's like, look, this is not the business that I signed up for. You know, I'm here to make money. I'm here to draw money. You know, if you want to have a five-star match, that's cool. But, you know, you're having a five-star match and only quarter of the ring is, a quarter of the arena is filled up. That's not business I'm trying to be a part of. And there's nothing wrong with him feeling that way. Because the thing about AEW, they can have great matches. <clears throat> they can do fantastic matches. But, if they're not growing their fan base and only the hardcore niche fans are showing up, that's cool. But how are you going to grow your business? Your business is going to stay stagnant. That's the problem. That's the problem they have now. It's not that people don't care. It's they're losing. They're, people are losing interest or new fans may not even want to check it out because it may not appeal. It's not appealing to them. It's not appealing to the everyday wrestling fan, the hardcore fan, they may, they're going to come in droves for the most part. And even then they're starting to lose that too, because their ratings are slipping. They have high moments and low moments, but overall their ratings are slipping because some people are not liking the direction of the product. And it all really stems from Tony, bro. Tony, he shouldn't be booking the shows. He should be worrying about the financial side of things, but he should not be booking the shows he should not be handling the talent because he clearly he's too passive he just lets things happen he also mentioned that uh nick Khan is the reason why cm punk is even in wwe because they have been having conversations for a while he's the only reason why they're they're in wwe why cm punk's in wwe it's because of nick Khan. so hey look Go check out the interview. I, I can't do it justice. It's over two hours. Definitely check out. See what CM Punk uh, had to say. There's a lot of informative stuff that he said about this whole situation with AEW and his return to WWE and, and stuff like that. So definitely go check it out. It's definitely worth a listen. If you're, you know, just listening to it, like driving or working or whatever. Or it's definitely worth a watch to, you know, watch the visual. But overall, man, more of the story is... Jack Perry is a fool. <laughs> Tony Khan is too passive and he's not really good at Matt, like running a wrestling business per se, like running the rock locker room and stuff. He's more probably better on the business side of things. And uh, CM Punk seems to actually be happy <laughs> and enjoying what he's doing. So, you know, that's, that's the gist of what I got from here. And the fact that he, you know, he has no ill will towards AEW. He just, you know, he realized that wasn't the business or that wasn't the place he needed to be to, you know, you know, fill out what he wanted to do uh, with wrestling going forward, which is completely understandable. Comment down below. Let me know what's your thoughts and opinions on this entire interview. If you had checked it out, let me know how y'all feeling about things. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K and I'm still in the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.